Okay. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Bye. Good luck tonight. Go get a haircut. <laughs> yes, I need it. Okay. How you doing, guys? I'm just waiting to head back from Brett. I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes. Anybody here from Brett? Nope, I haven't heard anything Brett. We'll just give it another minute or so. So I know he was working and it's a beautiful day. Carl, can you hear us okay in your little cube there? I can hear you as long as you can hear me. You gotta get a new microphone, dude. I, well, I, I, I gotta get a microphone. This is stupid little laptop has a crappy microphone. Could you buy a microphone for it or no? No. I did buy some internal speakers today for a so microphone. Right, so Dave, you listening to J Judge Judy during the meeting? <laughs> no. Is that <laughs> Is that what's going on, Judge Judy, back there? Bang. I, I could put something more sophisticated on. Actually, you know what? It's usually me TV. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Hi there. <laughs> we'll run channel eight in the background. Actually, I guess last week we extended over into the finance committee's time a little bit. Uh, I think because of that, we have to go shorter this week. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Why don't we start? We'll hit uh, Brett up anyways. Um, good evening, everybody in Lunenburg. My name is Dave McDonald, Chairman of the Sewer Commission. I'd like to do a roll call, confirm that all the members and, and persons anticipating the meeting are present. We'll start off with Michael Nell. Just uh, say aye. Michael Hi, how are you? President. Uh, John, John Reynolds. <laughs> I am here. Brett Ramson. Carl Luck. You here, Carl? Can you hear us? Present. I hear you fine. Okay. Uh, Jack Rodigans. Hello, I'm here. Thank you. Barbara. Here. Thank you. Jane, I know you're on mute, but I know you're here. Uh, Hey, good afternoon. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and that the meeting of the Sewer Commission is being conducted remotely. The town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health of Massachusetts, Department of Public Health, and the CDC regarding virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread of all town facilities and currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's orders, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, all public meetings will be conducted remotely <laughs> in order to an order which you can find posted at the town website on the COVID-19 information center. Pages access through the town manager's web page allows public bodies to meet entirely remote, remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded and that the public can take along with the deliberation derivative talk during the meetings. Ensuring the public access do not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting, this meeting will feature a public comment. For this meeting, the Sewer Commission will be conveying a video conference via the Zoom app posted on the town website to identify how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some of the attendees are participating by the video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that all other folks may be able to see you and take <clears throat> care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by recordings. Any questions so far? Okay, let's go right to the announcements. Uh, announcements. Bob, I'm going to let you go over the third quarter billing. Sure. Um, the <clears throat> the due date of the third the Q3 bills was July, uh, March 30th. And based on the special legislation that was passed, um, they are not, we are not assessing late charges or interest until June 30th. So that's just so that people are suffering the ills and misfortunes of COVID-19. They do have some leeway before they have to pay the bill before they're charged interest. So just wanted to let, make sure everyone is aware of that. As of June 30th, the, everything will be applied um, at this point in time. So you want to have it paid by June 30th. Um, any comments on that by anybody? 
Okay, let's move on. Does he change? I, I, I got my hand up. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, I just wanted to uh, add, just so everybody understands that, um, as, as Bob said, it's true. But if you're if you're late past June thirtieth, I think the date was. If you're thirty first, uh, it's retroactive. So you get so you get hit with both months uh, uh, retroactive interest or whatever whatever happens. Just so people know that it isn't just one month; it goes all the way back to the beginning. Thank you for that. Change to the irrigation meter policy, Barb. Just we're trying to all, all make everyone aware with our chance of being publicly broadcasted that there is a change to the irrigation meter policy and all participants have to have their meters outfitted with a remote read capability by July 1st. Later, to, it's further on the agenda to be discussed, but as of right now, that is the policy. Yeah, I just saw that. Okay. And one next announcement, Governor Baker announced just shortly today that he's extended the stay at home, the stay at home advisory, extended the prohibition of the prohibition of gathering more than 10 people, the closure of non essential businesses until May 18th. As the, as the previous orders, the closures of town facilities public will also be extended until May 18th to, to fall in line with the governor's orders. If anybody has any questions or concerns or what is open, what is isn't, please check out the websites on the town and the various departments. Uh, public comment, I'd like to go through public comment. Mike. Oh, good. John. I'm good. Carl. Uh, nothing, thank you. Sorry, one more time. Mr. Luck. No comment. No comment, okay. Uh, the only thing I'd like to mention is that uh, we've been out in the uh, town and uh, I know things are getting rough for some people. They're starting to feel shut in. The weather is getting better. So hopefully everyone at home can take advantage of the uh, beautiful weather that's coming this weekend and get out. Uh, with that, I'd like to go on to our next agenda, which is the RFP the finalization. Has everyone saw the RFP that we worked on last week? Yes, I have. And I know I have it in, in here somewhere. I will find it. Um, it'll start the same thing. By the way, I'm calling not in any spec uh, specific order. I'm going across the board that I have here. So Mike, John, Carl, Barb, um, Jack, and Barb. So that's the way I'm using this. So let's look at the RFP finalization. And Mike, do you have any comments on the finalization of it? Nope. I'm I'm good. No questions on the sheets. And Bob, how many pages do we got here for this thing? Uh, seven. Okay. It's just the right, just what was there. I I believe I sent you both a clean copy so it's legible right. and then that's, also a track copy. Have. Yeah, I get the clean copy, so before we go on, let me explain in that package, I think, and again, Bob, I got like five copies of the Macy's proposals. Anybody get those at home or is it just me? Which proposal? Macy's proposal, the sheets that we use as a, I put them in there as a template last, me, uh, last meeting. It should have oh, only yes. been like three pages. Yeah, but, and that a lot of that is not applicable to what right. we're doing. It's just the main bottom one where it says the general conditions, uh, percentages of, uh, Mockups, things like that. Did, did you guys see that? It's the bottom right hand corner of all that stuff. Oh, I saw it. I get the idea. I think it's a good yeah. idea to break yeah, it down. Into do. categories. And this is something that a lot of businesses are doing today when you do a proposal for anything. So if you look at the, and again, I'm using Macy's as a template, but a lot of our other clients are doing the same thing with an AIA documentation. I think a lot of the uh, towns are using AIA. Uh, but if you look at the, spreadsheet at the bottom of the sheet and it's kind of hard because it's broken up but it'll say on there mock-ups um bob did you look at that book i did but i as i said in the thing i just if i i need input i have the the rate schedule on there with different labor levels but i didn't know how to really how to incorporate what you were looking for into it basically what they do and the advantage of this is it goes out as the rfp uh, but it gives us a breakdown to work with for future items. For example, 
we can change this. You don't have to use this the same way. We can ask what their hourly rates are, which I know is going to be on the other form. We can ask what their markup is. We got to ask what their markup is on subs. Uh, and that's something that I'm just going to let you talk to Heather about if she wants to incorporate it in the final um, RFP, that's up to her. And I think when we do the interview process, this would give us a, a heads up on what we're doing and how much we're charging and what we need to budget in the future. So that that's why it's out there. It's not to uh, um, look at this whole thing. It's only that bottom right here corner of the proposal. Or in this case, it's on a separate page. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Now that that's out there, Mike, do you have any more questions with the IRSP? No, no, I, I, I think what I like it that it's nice and clean. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Good. John? Um, no, I, I don't have any issues. I, mean, I think Carl did bring up a good point about stating in there 10 hours. And I'm sure, as he said, they'll probably just throw in their hourly rate, but um, I'm just not sure how else to do it at this point in time. So well, yes, I'm, all, I'm fine with it as it's written. Okay, so let's talk about that before we move on. Um, and I, I, you, you gotta look at it a lot of different ways. So, and, and this is something I like to ask Jack, if we leave these limited hours out, that we know what other people said it would take to do that, would it be smart to limit it to hours or let people just bid on that scope, which is the page, uh, page one? What do you think, Jack? Um, I don't know. I, I can see both sides of it. Uh, <clears throat> I, th I think I see Carl's point in terms of these are the things you have to get done. Uh, it's up to you how many hours it takes to do it. Uh, I also, you know, <clears throat> was listening, as I said the last time, to my charge as to have some sort of base foundation upon which to, you know, have an apples for apples approach. I'm not passionate either way. Uh, I think the important thing is to have the, the list, a comprehensive list, which by the way, we were able to get from um, Wright Pierce and it's um, amazingly close, if not exactly the list we have. So we can put this list right into the RFP. Um, if it's the pleasure of the commission to just give the list and bid on the list, that's fine. If you wanna do the 10 hours, that's fine too. I really, as I say, I'm not, I'm not passionate about it either way. It'd be up to you guys. I think when we, when we talked about the hourly rate, I know we all talked about a couple of weeks ago that it's very hard to give a constant service agreement by the hour. And we, that's how this kind of developed. So I like this idea. I also like the suggestion that Kyle and John just mentioned send it out as is and let them bid what it is. Let them tell us what they think is going to need. But I guess the question I got for you and Barb is would this stop the gray areas if it went out like this? Well, we would know if a contractor believes it would take far more than 10 hours. They're going, we, we put in their estimated and then further throughout the RFP, I would say established number of hours so that you know, once they tell us what they imagine it would be, um, we'd have their hours. But it also gives us a clue as to how many hours that a, a bidder is going to think it's going to take. Jack, your thoughts? No, oh, I just gave you my thoughts on it. Okay, let's go on. John, was that it? Did you have one of your thoughts? Yeah, um, if it wasn't in there, it might it might draw more questions from potential bidder, uh, okay. which might be a good thing. So. Mr. Luck. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, on, um, on that, um, I'm, I'm comfortable with estimated of 10. I appreciate the commission's uh, putting the estimated word in. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing to, to, to give them a rough scope. Um, you know, as Barb said, or, or Jack, I forget who, um, they can always come back in and say, well, where does this come from? And ask us more questions. But at least it, I, I, I'm very comfortable with the estimated 10. I'm very comfortable with the way it is. Um, on that, in that same paragraph though, is my, my other two comments. 
Uh, one, I'm just going to go back to the um, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing um, in, in going through the two, last two minutes so we can approve them later. In each minute, it's, it's mentioned that all, all the commissioners felt very comfortable that, that the, our problems were somewhat due to the three days and that we needed to have five. Uh, I'm not going to push to make it five, but I would like to, the commission to consider having it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at a minimum. I'm concerned that if, if we get into this and for whatever, I mean, it wasn't enough for small water. The, the guys that small water put on this at the end, three days was not enough. If we get into another case like that, I'd hate to have a contractor coming back to us and say, hey, you know, three days is all, all you paid for. Now, if you want, you know, if you think you need more, then, um, you know, then we're, we need a change of scope uh, and, and it's by the hour. So I, I'm not sure sure that put minimum in there would you know would would hurt and i think it could give us some uh, some flexibility and set the expectation again for the contractor that it, they need to go there enough to give us a reliable system so i'd like to start i have one more comment if you want me to do that first dave and then open it for discussion or how do you want to handle this no oh, let's let's get all your stuff on the table so we can go back because i got i'm going to do the same thing that you're doing okay um the other thing in that paragraph um We've, and I couldn't find it anywhere else and I can't say I'm a good screener. So the generators have kind of dropped out and in the list that we have, um, and Jack, I'm glad you're here, you can, you can help me. I thought that, that when they went in to the stations, they did something to make sure that the generators um, you know, turned on when necessary or maybe they exercised them. Wasn't there some interaction with the generators? Because as it stands now, all they got to do is check the fluids. They don't have to care about whether they work or don't work uh, if, if the if the automatic you know exercise hasn't there's no different hours they don't have to even note that so okay uh, I did. I, I'm just concerned that, go ahead, Jack. sorry don't mean to talk it's a little hard not to talk over somebody I do that anyway but <clears throat> under um, Ray Pierce's list uh, generator and this is consistent with my uh, discussion with the potential vendor. It says check the battery charge, record run hours, and visually check generator for leaks and any issues with hoses, belts, etc. Which is, you know, he's given it the once over, he's making sure it has been exercising, you can tell that through the run hours. Uh, he makes sure the battery's charged, which has been a problem in the, in the past. Um, and he just does an overall check. I think that's uh, okay. that's enough for that vendor. We have another list uh, when it's appropriate time. We'll, we'll talk about that RFP, but I think we need to get this one out of the way first. Okay. I, I, I thought I remembered, though, um, and maybe it was back when Al was doing this originally on some reports, reading that they actually somehow um, uh, confirmed that, that if they lost the generator would turn on. Am I dreaming that, or is there an easy way that they can, with a flip of a switch, simulate loss of power and, and actually confirm that the generator turns on automatically? Well, they can exercise the generator right there. They can shut off street power and um, note that the generator comes on. Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I thought that was, I thought I read that in some report. I didn't, I didn't uh, dream that you up. You may have it just. Uh, I don't have it on the list uh, as generated uh, as generated by Wright Pierce, but um, uh, I don't think it'd, it'd be difficult to to add. I mean, it says record run hours. If it's not turning on, it's it's exercised on a regular schedule. I couldn't tell you exactly what that schedule is, but if the run hours are out of whack, it means it's not coming on. Um, right. You know, it's pretty simple for him to uh, switch off street power and then wait for the generator to come on. I'd like to propose that we just that we add that. And since both documents are pulled in, the um, you know we could we can clean that up in the maintenance document if you like that one better, Jack, or or add it here. I I, I don't care as long as it shows up somewhere. We can clean it up. I, you know, let's let's. I'd like the vendor, the pump, pump station technician to, and he does by this list and he does by the original list to keep an eye for
for lack of a better term, on the generator. He's not going to do repairs, but he may note repairs. And then um, we'll make that transition from his uh, tasks to the generator people. Uh, he'll sort of leave it off at that RFP and we'll pick it up in the RFP for the generators. <clears throat> Mr. Luck? I, I think I lost the thread at the very end, Jack. We're not expecting the generator guy or unless there's a problem in general, right? Or, or it's the annual maintenance or whatever. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, okay. Um, my, my only other... Um, um, the, on the, uh, the, um, the markup, um, situation. Uh, I think it's Barb, there is a, you know, there is a place on the sheet that Barb has for markups. Um, if we want to expand that, I think that's the place to do it. But I think it picks up the, the markups we're expecting, which the markups under uh, material markups under a thousand dollars, but we could expand that. Um, just a comment on, um, um, I think we need to be a little careful. Um, and maybe I misunderstood you, Dave, but if we don't have a request for markups in this RFP, I don't think during interviews or during we can um, we can be asking people what their markups are. I think it has to be in the RFP for us to uh, to dis discuss because otherwise, you know, one vendor might be hearing something different than the other, and everything needs to be um, disclosed. So, if we want to detail markups at any you know greater detail than Barb has in there. Then I suggest we add a few rows to that um, to that column, and um, just specify which markups we want there, so that everybody knows what we're looking for. Okay. And I think the only other thing is a detail of Barb. But maybe it's maybe it's fine in the procurement world. Way down on the uh, uh, Roman numeral six, proposed pricing. What page, Carl? Uh, um, uh, item one, successful bidder will submit a dollar amount of the numbers of hours. Um, I, would normally, I, would, I would normally have put in after dollar, a, a, or before dollar, a fixed dollar amount, uh, just to make it real clear it's a, that that piece of quote is, um, is fixed. But that's just a comment. Uh, we, we can move on. And that's it, Dave. Otherwise, I like it. All right, so I'm going to give you my uh, concerns, starting on page one. I was looking at the uh, generators as far as testing. I think we just need some clarification when they go in. And because uh, I, I saw on here, uh, the generator run times and also generator fluids. So they're going to be checking the fluids and then checking the generator. So if they're doing that, I was concerned the same thing. Are they going to test them to see if the lights are green? I haven't seen these, but my generator has a light on it that everything's running fine. Is there any warning lights? Are they going to let us know? If they're touching the generator, your thoughts about them starting up and make sure it starts? And that's a question I'm going to leave up to you guys. But that, is, that was a question of mine. How does, how does that work? Are we, right. going to have a, are we going to hire a company in the RFP for the generator company to come by? Go ahead, Jack. Dave, um, first of all, I I really like the generator you have at your house. Uh, I wish I had one, but it's not the same animal. Um, so there is a phrase here I think we could put into the, uh, the RFP for the technician, and that is uh, simulate power failure. Okay. I love it. Okay. Simulate power failure. All the things he has here, well, a few things, check the battery, check the run hours, Visually, you know, do the windshield check on the leaks, hoses, belts, all that, and then simulate power failure. So you're giving it, you know, nothing's leaking, nothing's, the mice aren't in it, uh, it's got fuel in the tank, uh, it's been running, there's nothing obtuse about the exercise times, the battery works, boom, simulate power failure. Okay, so the so generator only, are you saying? Generators only, yeah. Okay. Well, and is, what else would you simulate? Power? I'm just, I yeah. want to write it correctly. That's, that's, all. that's on the technician. That's not the generator's uh, right. RFP. That's the right. technician's, technician's RFP. Do you have that right Pierce list in front of you? Or? Yes, I do. But I don't, it doesn't, 
It just says check. It doesn't say that. So what I'm no. saying is I'm borrowing that from the generator yeah. scope. Okay. And, and I think that satisfies Carl's point. Okay. Um, simulate power fill. You throw the switch. Does it work? Bang. Okay. Throw it back. We're good. And is then that's a daily function? You know, that's the other question is. Well, it isn't, is it, this is where we get into the 10 hours. It's not daily. Uh, you know, it's not every day. It's when they do their work. We have them a list. We have a list for them to, to check. And now, you know, we've bantered back on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every day, overpriced. So when you say, is it daily? No, it's part of their checklist. Okay. Whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or so many hours, they have to be responsible for this checklist, which will be in every station, and that will be on the checklist. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. All right. And then on page five, which is the sheet of the hours and stuff, does anyone have any questions on that? This is the most important sheet that I think is the uh, breakdown from the Monday through Friday, Sunday, holidays, blah, 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 and mock-ups. I, I think we should just put in their mock-ups. That's something you can ask Heather. What is their mock-up percentage? I was going to use the form that we got, but you can put it here. Doesn't matter. That's something that legal would have to look through with uh, with uh, Heather. But we should know what their percentage of mock-ups are going to be on materials and the hourly rates and all that. But does that, anybody have any questions on that? We'll start with Mike. No, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, we took out the, the part, the no charge part or same rate or whatever, but no, I think it's. Well, the markups on parts, is that? The mark, the the mark, I, agree, I agree with you. I'd like to see the, like your, some form of your sheet thrown into this, just so we can maybe get a little more competitive with it. That's all. Yep. Well, if I was doing a bid, that's what I would do. I, I would use this sheet to try to win the bid. So more information on this, the better it would be. Right, exactly. But the mock-ups for parts, is that limited to $1,000? I don't understand that part. Well, I guess that's where your sheet would come in, wouldn't it? Well, we'll just mock it. We'll get rid of that part. And... I mean, any company that buys any parts that's not being supplied by us should be mocked up. I'm not sure you guys agree. Or... Yeah, but we want to minimize that, Dave. I think I, I'm hoping that that we'll, even though we have something in place for markups, yeah. that we'll make every effort to have accounts uh, at places, at the random, for the random part, small or large, um, if we can't get an account set up there, I think there are gonna be few few things that they buy that they will mark up because we will have, a, have blanketed uh, what we need with, with accounts straight through to the town. I don't think markup is going to be a big issue, but but I agree, 100 percent that we should have a have a line in there for it. So I mean, if you go to page six, item B, on the paragraph six, it says markups for materials of a thousand dollars or less purchase and billed to the sewer commission with prior authorization authorization will be allowed. I mean, does that explain it to everybody? You guys feel? Uh, or is that contradicting it? Mr. Chairman, um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm, I'm a little confused. I saw your sheets and they definitely are uh, pretty thorough. Um, I'm not sure how they link into the quote. I, I think on the markup, I think um, I, I'm happy to hear Jack saying that we were hoping not to have many, but to cover us, I think we should have a markup as she's, as Barb has, a mar, you know, a, and percent, it's a percent markup. Um, but there should be one for under a thousand and one for over a thousand. Um, although we all hope we, they never go over a thousand that we manage that, it could happen and it'd be good to have that percent contained. Okay, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is you look at page six, uh, letter B, we're, we're saying to any company we hire, do your markups, either a thousand dollars or less or a thousand dollars or more, but Jack's going to approve anything over a thousand dollars. Is that, is that word is good for you or? I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so there's no contradiction from the sheet to that. And my sheet, by the way. But yeah, I, I, Dave, I don't think it does. It doesn't do it for me. What doesn't do it? 
Well, the, the first one does it. It says that, you know, for materials of $1,000 or less, um, uh, it doesn't even say that. Maybe I'm not looking at the right. Which paragraph talks about markups? Page six. Paragraph yeah. six, letter B. B1, right? Markup for materials for a thousand or less. And that, B, so that's, that's all of them. B1 through five, four. Yeah, but the, but the, only this one talks about markup. So it talks about markup for a thousand or less. And the bid sheet has a place that they've got to put in what their markup is for a thousand or less. So that's great. Those are consistent. Uh, it never talks about markup over a thousand. All right. it says is that it must be authorized by TPW director, but we should agree what's the markup over a thousand. But it, good, that, we should understand what their markup is going to be over a thousand. Okay. Uh, okay, Kyle, hold on. Jack, go ahead. Get your hand could, up. I, could I just, um, I don't disagree with the conversation, but I just have an explanation of, of your uh, reasoning for over and under a thousand and not just uh, markup on materials. Why is the thousand dollars? Why do you feel a thousand dollars is critical? I, I don't think it is. Hold on, Carl, for one second. I don't think it is. I think a markup is a markup. What, why are we distinguishing from under a thousand to over a thousand? It's well, that, that, that's my question. I, I, I thought it was in there because somebody brought it up and, and rightfully so, if that's how they felt, but um, uh, markup is a markup on material. Markup is a markup. That, that's why I don't want any confusion. So, if you look at the sheet that we sent out, it's a markup straight across the board. Mike, do you charge anything for? Do you, do you charge different markups at different prices? Oh yeah, all the time. But it's different, different prices. It's a different business. It's a different business. I mean, I, I've never done it. It's it's general right. Yeah, but I'm, I'm in a I'm in a retail business. You got stuff that moves quick. It's it's a, it's competitive. It's you you've got to give away your margins to get the. But business. it is, Mike. Is it uh, on a on a dollar value of the invoice? No, no. Okay, so that's that's the discussion here. Right. You have yeah. different material. Different materials may have different markups for you, but it but the dollar value. If your invoice is five hundred. Versus if your invoice don't is change. no, it don't change. No, there you go. There you go. Yeah, and and I, I just like to say that I I I'm thinking we're overthinking this whole thing. I, I like Jack's idea of making sure we have plenty of vendors in place. So chances are, when something goes wrong, they've got a vendor to buy it from. And if they go out and go to a different vendor, now they got a problem because we've already provided the avenue for them to get the parts. So I don't think we're going to run into it a lot. And if it happens once, we'll just open up an account there. So, Mr. Chairman, go ahead, Carl. Um, yeah, I, a couple things, and because I'll, I'll forget, I'll, I'll hit the one Mike just said. Um, I think we need to be protected against them going to another vendor, or you know, it could, maybe in our best interest, they've 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 got something going so it's going to happen i'm sure that we're going to be that they're going to be buying a part that's over a thousand dollars um and i think we need to have we need to have a number on any value part uh we we um that they buy for us for markup so that we have a controlled situation and it isn't you know at the at the time regarding the dollar value from a fairness point of view the contract ought to be you know fair and it should be covering you know, their costs. And I don't think a straight, you know, if this was a business that all, all of the things you buy are in the, you know, $100 or the $10,000 range, then a single number is fine. But I, I don't think there's any way that a 20% markup on a $10,000 pump, you know, is going to cost them $2,000 to place the order um, and, and manage the order. So I, I, I'm very strong against having a single markup for such a you know, so it's a, a large range of, of, of items, you know, under a thousand. Yeah. Okay. It's 200 bucks at most and purchasing and all those things fine, but a, you know, a $10,000 pump and we pay them $2,000 to place the order and receive it, I think is, is too much. And, 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 and it's their, it's their privilege, but I think we should, you know, pull that out and, and say, you know, over a thousand dollars, what's your markup. Um, so that, so that they can differentiate because some some contract some contractors may uh, may have different numbers there. 
Okay, one of the things is, and I and I understand what you're saying, Carl, but let's get into real world. Real world is you're not going to get a 20% markup on the parts. And, and that's something that we'll see when we send up the RFP. And the other yeah. thing is if we allow them the 20% and they're putting up their capital to buy it, yeah, they're entitled to it. I mean, that's that's what I do. If, if you want me to buy it, and then you're going to pay me to do it. I need the big. That's what that all, that's what all this is. It's It's part of doing business. Now, if they come back and say, I need a $10,000 pump, I'm sure Jack's going to say, okay, we'll order it for you. I don't think Jack's going to say, okay, go ahead, get the pump. Is that correct, Jack? Yeah, and um, yes, simple, simple, yes. I think we're talking about parts in the field that when you're repairing something like a AAA guy, you need a washer, you need this or you need that or bushings, whatever it is, it's controlled. The only thing I'm trying to do is find out what that magic number of a mock-up is. And if we can use page six at the bottom to do that, that's fine with me. But it's, again, if you're using their money, they're entitled to a markup. I mean. Yeah, it's not, it's not ordering the part. It's not me, ordering the part. It's, it's carrying the, the debt of the part until they get paid from us. That's the idea of, that says, I understand a markup. Maybe Mike, you're the businessman and isn't, it isn't the ordering. It's like if you have to put your money up to pay for it, and you have to wait from somebody for some from somebody to get paid. That's what the markup is for. You're using exactly. your money. Exactly. Yeah. But but to your point, if if we're supplying vendors and they they have the yeah. avenue to just get it, they're not putting up their money. They're using town's money at that point. And that's right. No markup. Nothing. Yeah. And then re refresh my memory. In in the past, when there have been large ticket items. Did the town buy them or did small water buy them? No, we bought them. Particularly, okay, so that's, particularly that's large. That's not going to change. Yeah, particularly large ticket items, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think what this is doing for us, though, is just finishing off the RFP. If, if, if. That, that's all, it has to be in there, but it shouldn't be a, I guess what I'm trying to say, what I see is as a scale. And it shouldn't be. It just say, hey, listen, you know, uh, uh, we, need, we need this. Jack's going to say, I don't have it in inventory. Go out and buy it or buy it from one of our vendors, like Mike is saying. But if by chance they gotta buy something, they should be entitled to a markup. And I don't think you're looking at a lot of money here, guys, at the end no. of the day. Um, hold on, I'm sorry here, I gotta read this bottom. Uh, Bob, go ahead. I just wanna point out, we had it, the way we have it on the rate scale is markup under a thousand, and then on another page it's anything over a thousand needs Jack's authorization. Jack will approve whatever they say the cost will be. So we're covered for under a thousand, but or when the parts are bigger, then it's going to be DPW director approval. Sorry. Okay. Carl, go ahead. Mr. Lott? Uh, no, um, is my hand still up or something? I just put it down, <laughs> but it was up, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're like the little kid in school. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so all what I'm saying is you're trying to simplify this and come up with one common denominator. That's my opinion. And let's just talk about it real quick one more time. Mike, any concerns? How do you want to keep it? Are you fine with it the way it is? I'm, I'm fine with it the way it is because I don't think it's going to come into play a lot. One of us has to go. And I don't, you know. Okay, John? I, I'm fine with the way it is. Okay. Carl? I'm okay. And I for myself. So Barbara, I just want to say this is excellent. I mean, some people were looking at it and were coming to us saying, you know, we had a 42 page RFP. Um, so this is much better, much cleaner. You and Jack did a great job on this. Uh, thank you very much. Let's get it to Heather for Adam so we can send it up. Okay. Um, everybody's approval the way it is. Is that with your, your inserts of Macy's, like the subcontractor line? No, you use no use this the okay. only question i would do with you as a business manager you should be calling heather and saying hey heather what do you feel about this item which was the 10 um the uh what is it page six a thousand dollar thing you have in there i would yeah. probably take that out if it was me that's up to her okay because you're confusing it you know i mean you're giving someone an opportunity i would just take out the thousand mark up for pots call it a day that's what I would do, but that's up to you and Heather. At least it's in there. At least it's in there. There won't be any surprises. Yeah, it's in there. That's all. 
I mean, this is a very good product that we all came up with and I'm very proud of what we did. And looking at the experience over the last seven years, we had our peaks and valleys, just like any else. This should eliminate a lot of the problems that you guys had. We could still do some budgeting based upon the hours. So it's a good tool for us as a commission, but it's a good tool for you to execute what you have to do. Again, my, my opinion, I think it's a good, good project. Okay, anything else on that? No, let's move on. SWS contract termination. Um, do you want to do the re the generator one? Or are we good? Oh, I, I didn't see that. Is that in there? Hold yes. On. I mean, very a lot of it's similar, but it, there are still differences. Oh, are we ready for the generator discussion here? Because do we we don't even really have a draft, do we? Yes, we do. Do we do? You know what? I, I was going to get a question. If we could table that to the next meeting, that would be okay. Because we're not in a real rush for a generator thing right now. Yeah. I can. I wasn't. I wasn't aware we had a draft because the the biggest question about that is twice a year, once a year. I don't remember. Did I just miss that? I, I missed it too. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't see it. it just I know it's in the package. So, and I'm looking at uh, scope of work, Lundberg pumps. Yeah, I think I vote to table this until our next meeting, Mike. Or can I have a motion to table this to the next meeting? Mr. Chairman, we, we table this. Generator RFP. To generate an RFP. Yes. I need a motion to table it. I, I make a motion to uh, postpone discussion on the generator RFP until the next meeting. Okay, I need a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Mike? Aye. John? Aye. Carl? Aye. And an aye for myself. Um, just to let you know, I did hear from Brett. He's stuck on a job. So he won't be obviously in, uh, joining us tonight. And I really wanted Brett's opinion on generators because he uses them all the time. So, okay, we'll tell you what that, Bob, can you put that on the agenda for the next meeting? Absolutely. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, SWS. What's our next step? Next step really is to be talking with council and Heather. It's up to Heather what the next step's gonna be. Our recommendations are gonna be what they are, but I think we should do that under a... Uh, executive session. Executive session, my opinion. Go ahead, Mr. Luck. Um, yeah, my, my only concern is to make sure we're, we're covered. Did we, our council, ever send a letter to Small Water advising them that their uh, uh, departing was a breach of contract? Are we on firm ground on that? We sent a notice to our attorney to let them be advised at their last day. So whatever the attorney wanted to do, he had the opportunity. Did I see something? No. But that doesn't mean he didn't do anything with Heather or Barbara. Have you seen anything come across? I have it? not. I did, forward it. I did forward Carl's suggestion to Adam, but I have not heard back on that. And what was Carl suggesting? Because we're not, am I we aware of This that? was just the, you know, did we notify any... Swiss at all formally of the termination and the possible breach of contract. We as a committee, Carl, probably not yet. So I, Mr. Chairman, I, I think we should, um, you know, I mean, everybody is, is really busy. I know and I've, I've seen uh, Adam and hit several of these Zoom things and, um, you know, with, the, with this COVID thing, he is, you know, really busy and stressed. Uh, so this may not be, um, you know, a, a high priority. <clears throat> but I, when I read the contract, I think we lose our rights if we don't formally notify. I think the contract says we have to formally notify them of a breach within 10 days. And if we haven't, you know, checked all of our legal boxes and we get to the end, which I hope we don't, and we've incurred excess costs because of their breach, then um, we'll be in a lot less position. So I, I think as a commission, we should um, specifically request counsel um, um, to comment on, on you know, should there be a formal notification to small water to preserve our rights? I think the uh, talking with the attorney a few weeks ago, 
when they gave us their notice, that was their intent to terminate the agreement, which was their breach. But I'll do this, Barb, if you get a chance, send the letter to Heather tomorrow. Just make her concern and make her aware that we're concerned about what the next step is with small water. And if they want to have an executive session with Adam, we'll be glad to do that on our next meeting because there is a lot to discuss. In the meantime, let's get the RFP out for the services and uh, let's get the RFP out for the generators and the budget, which we're going to go over probably next. Is my Mr. Chairman, I go ahead, Mr. Luck. I appreciate that. I, and, but I would feel a lot more comfortable if that letter specifically requested council's um, position on the contract and notification uh, to the supplier that we find them in breach. So I, I, th I think we should specifically ask council if we are, um, if we're covered or if we should formally be notifying uh, small water. I think we're gonna be notifying them when we come up with the suit that we're gonna be following, if we file at all. I, Again, this is something that I'm uncomfortable with. Mr. Chairman, I've been through, I've been through similar things, and if you if we don't have our legal ducks in order, and we don't have the, the documentation that we gave them sufficient notification, may we may not have a right to do any compensation. So I don't know why we wouldn't ask the question specifically to council. Mr. Mr. What I just said, I asked Barbara to send a letter to Heather tomorrow requesting that. There's nothing more we can do until tomorrow. Oh. Oh, I didn't hear that that, that, that was included. I, I, I heard just asking him what the next step was. So if it addresses that issue, then I'm happy. Thank you. Well, that is the issue, isn't it? I mean, at the bottom line, that's the issue. What's our next action against uh, our suppliers? And that's what we're going to do. But we're going to do it the right way as a commission and go through Bob and go through the town manager, which is their jobs, not ours. Our recommendation is very important, though. Uh, it, but I, I think our responsibility be, goes beyond asking that question because I think we have a contract that if we don't make a notification, we are losing the legal Mr. rights. Luck, Mr. Luck, we've talked about this three times. Tomorrow morning, they're gonna get a letter from Barbara. And again, I know what you're saying, but we know where we are. Any other comments? I don't agree. Okay, good. Any other comments? Mr. Knowles? No, I'm good. I think, you know, we're, that's gonna cover us there and they'll decide way to take it from there, so. Uh, John? No additional comment. Okay. Barb? No, I, I'm assuming by letter, uh, your email is fine with Heather and with Adam. That's my intent. Yeah, what, we need to know what the game plan is, which Correct. we talked about two weeks ago. Right. Okay. And Mr. Rodgers, Jack? Well, the letter's going out tomorrow. If as long as, as they understand there's a there's an urgency, what more can we do? But I want to make it clear that this commission will be given input to the town manager on on this, and as well as I'm sure Barbara and Jack. But again, this is where we are, and there's a lot of things going on in the world. So hopefully, the lawyers took our uh, our opinion strongly when we talked to them a few weeks ago. Okay. Mr. Chairman, one other question on the on the um, uh, yes, sir. Uh, small water and their termination um, in in the contract. Uh, they need to bring all the documentation up to date and provide us copies. Do we feel we have that? For instance, do we have the pump station reports right up to the data? Bob, go ahead. You're on your head. Yes. Yes, I did. Um, at, after it was early April, I guess, uh, we did ask uh, Kim Packard to get us the the weekly reports that had been missing. Um, we're good with that, everything but one week. And she was, it was left at the station. I will have to check with Al if, if that's been turned in. Great. Thank but you. they did get it all in. And yeah, in fact, I would have put it on the Google Drive. So I believe. And Carl, keep in mind, small water has been officially gone, what, one week, Chuck, I think? Was April, um, was April 9th was their, their uh, projected day, but they actually stopped working on April 7th, I think, or 6th. Which we, co which we corresponded back to our attorneys as well when that happened. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I believe it was well documented by Barb. Yep, and, and I'm sure uh, these lawyers know what they're doing. I hope so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. 
Let's move on. The uh, fiscal 21 budget. We have a meeting on Thursday night. So I'm going to give this to Barbara. And am I supposed to read anything on that, Barbara? You can do this. <laughs> nope. Everybody got the, it's unfortunately multiple copies um, because we have it without any rate increase as the one discussion had gone and then another was with um, a 10% across the board. If you're, if you're looking at the Excel um, sheet that I had sent entitled draft FY21 budget to SC for 420, oh, that's not it. Maybe 423 meeting, but it should have been 428. Um, anyway, it's the first tab that has the summaries with and without um, the rate increase that we really want to. Yeah, and for it's my title is incorrect for 423, but <clears throat> um, it does have it's for 428. Obviously, that's my most recent one. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Barbara, I lost you already. Are you going to screen shot this or no? Sure. You know, I shall do that. I Why think. don't you do that so we know what you're all talking about? Okay. Host disabled participant screen sharing. You have to enable me. Okay. Don't know how to do that. Hold on one second. You guys can talk while we're doing this. Host to save. I've, there's that little lock. Has that got anything to do with it up on the upper left? I don't know. No. Can I ask a question while she's uh, yep, go ahead. gonna locate that? Um, might expedite my part of this. Um, I believe the commission is in agreement with $150,000, correct me if I'm wrong, towards the um, pump station maintenance and related costs and $50,000 in infrastructure costs. Is that correct? I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. No, I think that's what's in there. I'm not requesting it. I, I want to be clear that that's in there. And if they, you got it. No, go ahead, Jack. And if there's any uh, strong disagreement with that, because that really, obviously, is my concern, and and um, the rest of it is really the uh, uh, in the purview of the commission. Mr. Chairman, go ahead, Carl. Uh, I just want to clarify. Look, um, so what we have in in what Barb is showing uh, us right now for a pump station contract is $138,000. Um, is, is that is that what you're referring to, Jack, is the 150? Uh, I am. I, I, my recollection was 150. I don't, I don't think it was 150 and went down to 130. I, but whatever number was in there <clears throat> on Barb's sheet that Barb and I had discussed, uh, along with the infrastructure number, as long as there was no resistance to that, um, is there any resistance to that number to be changed? Well, well I just, that's why I like to make sure what the, we all know what we're, yeah. so in what, what's in there now is 138 for the pump station, which is the contract we just did the RP for. There's 11, another, there's yeah. another 11,000 for the generator maintenance. Right. And then billing support floor and pump station grounds. I'm not sure what that is, but a thousand. So that, that all adds up to 154. So if that's okay, if that's, that's what you're it. referring there to. There you go. That that yeah. is, that is what I'm referring to, along with along with an infrastructure line, which I'm not exactly sure where that is, but I know that it's in there. Infrastructure, I think, yeah, right. Was total was was fifty thousand. The capital major uh, pump stations fifteen. Capital major repair twenty. Okay. Sewer jet, jetting seven, you know, so all of that stuff um, equaled the 50,000. So, okay, that's great. And it's always, I would ask you and I would ask the commission as a whole if, if there's any uh, strong or other resistance to those numbers in the downward direction. If there is, um, 
maybe we should discuss that and then I can get the hell out of here. Let's look at the bottom line on this, Bob. Where are we on the bottom line? You want this, this page or you want the summaries, the bottom line? We have the whole page of, of this budget. What are we going to take out of retained earnings? What are we putting in the retained earnings? Anything like retained that? Retained earnings. This is with a 10% rate increase. So it would be total expenses with the capital reserve transfer, et cetera, of a million forty-six and revenues a million ninety-six, allowing the forty-nine of overage, except that down below um, we have a um, a 193,000 deficit on Betterment over debt service. Um, so I think the net on, the, on these between the two. Um, is 144 would be taken from retained earnings with a with a re, e, with an increase and without it would be 231. Do you have the summary, the easy form that Heather gave us to use? That's what's right on the screen right now. All right, so go back to the top where it says summary of, uh, by the way, guys, this is gonna be the presentation for Thursday night at seven o'clock. This is what we're gonna be doing forward, going through with budgets, trying to make them a little bit more easeable for all of us. Uh, there's you have a 10% increase and without a, an increase. And basically all we want to do, forget your spreadsheet up above, Bob. I want to look at this and let's use that for questions and see how you feel about it and looking at it and working with uh, Heather and Bob. And I would recommend that you go with the 10% increase budget this year. And those are the numbers what it's going to show. My opinion. And we'll just open this up to, uh, let's just give everybody a chance to see it. Everybody got a copy of that in their package? It should say... Yep. Some of your draft, uh, 998, 230 on the top with a 10%. If you can pull that out at home if you got it. Now, and if it's Excel, it's that first, it's the first tab on the left. And my recommendation would be, and this is where John's uh, opinion is, is going to be uh, greatly appreciated. We talked about a 30 or 40% increase before this virus hit, which I still think is a lot. But if we can go with a 10% increase based on the revenues, as you see there, do it this year, take the money out of the retained earnings if we have a, a pitfall somewhere, but go into a cycle of, we're gonna be looking for an increase for the next three years. John, how do you feel about that? Since you're um, right. Right. I, I think that we need to go with the 10% increase. And I fully expect that, um, that it's going to go up quite a bit more. I, I know there's hope that working with Lemonster that we can keep it down, but you know I've, I've seen the numbers for the last three years about uh, the discrepancy between the outflow meters and the water meters, and I, I, I think the discrepancy, unless we find some big I and I um, are going to have to come about. So yes, definitely 10%, but I don't want to keep going back into retained earnings next year and the year after and the year after that. Uh, I, I don't either, but go ahead. So we just, we need to be prepared to uh, have a pretty significant increase over the next few years. But I think starting with this 10% right now is the right thing to do. Barbara, what would that imply to the average homeowner? How much money? That's 87,000, as I figure. And we have about 800 or 900 customers. It all depends. I'm, I, don't, I haven't figured it out for the average because we've got commercial and residential in there. Well, how, how many, res how many 10 residential? Percent, are there? A 10% increase would be like 126 per thousand. We're at 115 now per thousand. So if their their usage was a thousand cubic feet, it would go up eleven dollars. You're probably running the numbers, Mr. Luck. What do you think? 
Well, I think Bar I think at the very high level, Barb's uh, first approach. It's uh, um, it's how much was it? Eight. It was eighty thousand dollars. That's a hundred dollars a on the average of a user round numbers. We got about 800, 800 users. We got eighty thousand dollars. But there's quite a range of users, as Bob right. said. There's, a, there's uh, probably twenty percent of our users are are uh, minimum, which is like around four hundred a year. So there, it's only you know forty dollars. But we've got some users like the town that are quite huge, um, commercial. So it, it's all over the place. So that, so the, the the average isn't a great number, but it's a hundred dollars on the average. A year. Is that correct? A year. A year. Yes. I, I'd rather try to refine that number, Barbara. So when we're asked that question, which we will be on Thursday night, I'd like to give them an intelligent answer. Okay. I, I think I think an easy way to look at it is basically take your current bill you have now. It's not gonna it's not gonna be a perfect fit, but ten percent. Get an eighty dollar right. bill, your bill is now gonna be roughly eighty eight. I mean it's right. not gonna be the perfect formula, but it's close it's gonna be real close. Well, I mean, ten percent budget, <laughs> and I know these different rates is different, but okay. yeah, and that's the that's the tough thing. And, and I don't know, maybe I forget how your spreadsheet is um, uh, is laid out. If it's laid out that the, that you can just you know add a column and take ten percent, as Mike said, of, the, of what everybody paid, you know, last year, or last quarter, or multiplied by four, that would be good for two reasons. One, it it could you know confirm how many payers are paying and what the big payers are. But the other thing is it would it would identify how much revenue we're actually going to get because it's not it's not that simple because we have uh, quite a few minimum charge users. So the 10% doesn't equate to 10% from them. So the number you know, the, the revenue we're estimating based on 10% um, wouldn't translate directly to a 10% per person if you want to really realize that dollar value. If you want to simply hit everybody with 10%, then you got to calculate what is it going to generate in terms of revenue, again, because of the minimum users. Right. And do we want to raise the minimum rate and or, and or change the minimum usage amount? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. It would be the simplest. The simplest would be to just to raise the minimum rate by 10%, right? That's the simplest to, to, to determine and calculate, and everybody knows what that right. is. Um, 97.20 is the that, current one. I mean, that, that's what I would do, just 10%, which is what is reflected in this budget at the top. But, but for, right for this year, for this year, mm -hmm. keep it as simple as possible. No. But what I like the best about this 10% is, first of all, it takes the hit off of retained earnings. Um, and it also gives us much stronger numbers to work off of. I would hate to go out after the town right now and guess at a rate increase. This takes the blow away, especially with what's going on. And the further we get into this, the more we're going to know the numbers and we're going to have a more accurate. And, you know, we none of us really have a great idea what it's going to be. We know it's going to be more. That's it. So hopefully it's, hopefully it's not as much as we thought it was going to be, but we'll have strong numbers to go by. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I, and, I, and I really hate to, to, to even seem to disagree with Mike, but um, I think the message, the message shouldn't be, to, shouldn't be that we don't know what's going to happen. We absolutely have three years, as John said, we have three years of data is what's going to happen with Lemister. We have a contract that, that is, tells us what's going to happen when they hit us with it. We have them on multiple, multiple occasions um, telling us this is effective now, this, this, this quarter at the least. So, and that's the, that's the, that's the problem. We, you know, we've kind of jumped to the bottom line and that's fine philosophically. Still a number of issues in the budget. Uh, it, in, unless Lemister says, you know, takes us off the hook, which they have not done. And um, a question, Barb, when do we, when do we receive the, the bill from Lemister? When's our next bill 
coming due from Lemonster? We will have one from them within a couple of weeks for our Q3 billing. Then the next one, it's so May and August, basically. And, and are we sure that that's not going to include this race, this, this change? Not a hundred percent. Confident from Roger that's not going to include um, it? He, no, it, with, I'm not a hundred percent, but I did receive the, the uh, billing sheet from my contact in Lemonster and it was based on just the water billing amount. So that leads me to believe that we're, we're good for another, this, uh, this next bill. Which is what we, what we thought we had agreed with Roger, but there was some, right. some uh, questioning on that. Right. Um, but unless there's some agreement above Roger, Barb, is it based on all of your direct interaction, is it your assessment that effective, uh, whatever it is, April 1st, we're gonna be charged by the water flowing to Lemonster. Correct, for April 1st flow, but build after the start of the fiscal year. Yes, but that's, that's, the, first, right. that's the first payment that's due of this, this budget, right? Correct. So we have, we, we know very well, and matter of fact, we've confirmed that the meters that we've been tracking for three years are very accurate. So we know exactly how much we, we, the difference has been. Uh, and we know that that's somewhere um, from 150 to $180,000. The sheets that I provided projected with the 4% increase in Lemister, $180,000 problem. Even if it's only $150,000 problem, none of that is covered in this budget. So I understand a 10% increase and, and so forth, but the, but the rest of the budget has to reflect what we know today, what we believe today the costs are gonna be. Um, so I, I don't see how we're gonna go into a, a, a meeting or stand up with our customers and say that this is, this is the budget with any confidence. We know very well what's gonna happen, but unless there's a deal struck you know, at a very high level with the mayor. And I don't think putting a budget together based on that is really responsible. Mr. Luck, I think what you're saying is correct to a point. We don't know what Lemus is going to do because we haven't had the opportunity to sit down with him and talk. I mean, we, we got to sit down with him. Jack has sat down with him bef before this Barb committee, and I this, got commission, this committee has never sat down with Lemus. Give us that opportunity. Yes, you're not doing this. Yes, we have. Yes, we have, Dave. No, you, we I, haven't. No. Mike I was I, charted uh, by this committee to sit down with, him, with Roger. Barb and I sat down with Roger, reported back to the committee. So at, at anything below the, the mayor's level, we have sat down, we've done our work. We have a contract that requires us to do that. And, and we've been told, and as Barb said, and, and, and I appreciate her frankness and honesty, we, we have every reason to expect that starting in April 1st, we're gonna be paying for the outflow, which will, which will cover our entire FY21 year budget. And there's zero, zero in this budget currently for any of that. So even if we get it pushed out uh, another quarter, if, if, if we're able to do that, uh, a quarter of $160,000, it's, you know, it's, this is just not an accurate reflection of where we are contractually and where we've been told by Lemons there will be and where our People that have been appointed to talk to the to, to Lemister, um, and I say Jack bought us probably two quarters last year. Um, Barb and I got us another two quarters as long as this April thing, uh, you know, holds that it comes in. Uh, so, uh, you know, we we begged and borrowed. So, Mr. Luck, instead of sitting there telling us what we already know, what would you recommend? You want to go with a forty percent increase now? This I year? recommend we should budget that. I I recommend we show a budget that re that reflects what we think it will be. And, and what's going to happen when you go in there with a forty percent increase this year? Uh, what's going to happen? I, did I say forty? I I, I didn't yes, say you, how you we mentioned it. You said thirty-five percent or more, Mr. Luck, at one of the meetings at the board of selectmen. So let's assume you just asked me. You just asked me a question, Mr. Chair, and you're putting words in my mouth. You asked me what the budget should reflect, and I said the budget could reflect the costs as best we know them today. Yeah. I didn't say anything about how you cover the costs yet. I wasn't asked that question. 
So instead of beating around the bush, using your own words, when you went to the commission, the board of selectmen, you said, quote, we're looking at an increase of 35 or more. Do you want to ask for a 35 or more percent increase now? I now, don't want to get I want to get all the costs on the table and then we decide as a commission how we're going to manage it. Okay, we don't have all the costs yet because we haven't got confirmation from Lemister. We have got confirmation. We, we also we don't, don't even know the, the cost of, we also don't even know the cost of the uh, uh, RFP that we're sending out yet. It's a bad time for everything that hit us at once. Well, I think we I think we've put a lot of thought and Jack's put a lot of thought and the whole commission has put a lot of thought into the estimate of the cost for that RFP. And we put a lot of thought in the Lemister increase too. Yes, but we're not putting it on a piece of paper. Because we don't know. So, I mean, we could put it on there. What don't we know, Dave? We don't know if Lemus is going to decide to work with us. Just because they talked to you, they didn't talk to this commission. We haven't reached out to them yet. Dave, I, I'm, 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 I'm very resentful. I was chartered by this commission to go talk to them. And now, and now you're, you're, you're saying that the commission never talked to them. We haven't got, first of all, I never got a report from you on what Lemus has said. Just so, just for the record, let's sit, let's get the record straight. I don't know what you guys talked about. Nobody ever came back and said this is the agreement. We asked you to go out. Yeah, absolutely, and obviously, yeah, it's right. I'll, I'll resend you the report, Dave. Yeah, I, if you choose not I to never, read, I never then I can't help it. If you want to send me the report again, send it to the or send it to Bob so she can send it out. Mike, have you ever saw a report? What happened? In, it's, it's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. Every time we came back, we reported on the on the meeting. So the question is, Mr. Luck, do you want to add a 40% increase based upon what you said? Do you want to do that? I want to be honest in, in reflecting the costs that we're looking at. Okay. Mike, what do you feel? I, I'm, I'm honestly totally against it. And, I, and I'm totally against it, first of all, for what's going on right now. I, I think I'd be maybe a little more open-minded to it if if you know our economy everything wasn't in a shambles i think we're being more than fair to our customers of of knowing that there's definitely an increase coming um knowing it's going to be more than 10 i'll be happy if it is 10 but it's, it's going to be more than 10. um i'm not convinced it is 35 percent and I, I don't care i'm i i like seeing what's actually there and by waiting a year using the retained earnings not taking the big hit that's where the 10 percent comes in um, in a year from now, we'll know what the new RFPs are. We have two big RFPs out there. We'll know how the year went as far as major repairs, anything like that. And we'll also know actual numbers because we'll be dealing with actual numbers with the increase. And that's, that's my opinion. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be clear because I, I think Mike misunderstands me and it may be because you keep putting words in my mouth. That we, what I think the increase should be. I'm not sure we should have a 10% increase. To tell you the truth, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not. We've never discussed that 10%. You, you're the one who told Barb to rock, work up a 10% increase. We can we've never that. discussed it as a commission. We I think, given that. the time right now, I'm not sure we should do a 10% increase. I, I, but I do think we should tell the people what we're looking at. You know, we have the opportunity, and I think we should, we should think about. But, you know, being a little bit more creative than, you know, you know, A equals B here. I think we need to put another uh, element in the equation. I think that? we should consider doing something more like the town's doing. The, the town doesn't know what the state aid's going to be. The town doesn't know a lot of things. So a lot of things are being deferred to fall town meeting. There's nothing that says we can't put a budget in place that gets us through to November, and in November, we'll know what Lemus is charging us, we'll know what the quote is. We don't need to wait a year to find out these things that we don't know what the quote is in, the, in a month. We're gonna know what Lemister's bill is, either the beginning, uh, you know, either in a few weeks, as, as Barb says, or in July, beginning of July, Barb. Certainly by summer, we're gonna know. You guys will have a chance to go maybe, maybe get a good deal. I don't, I don't know. So, but I think we need to be honest with the people for what might be coming down at them as best we know today. I don't think that we're trying not to be honest with the uh, 
our customers. I think we're totally honest with our customers. And who said that we weren't going to bring that up at our presentation where we are? I mean, we have to do the presentation. I, I think you're putting words into our mouth. Uh, I, I think I, I resent that as well. I don't want to go back and tell these citizens that uh, if this or if that, we don't know. You know, and, and I'll, take a, I'll take a quote from one of the selectmen that you know very well. We don't know what tomorrow brings. It could be a 40% increase. It could be a 35% increase. We've never charted these waters before, but we're going to get through it. We're going to get through this business. Then, then John, then, hold on one then, second. Then, John, are you back? Hold on. Okay, here we go. There you go. Oh. Okay. So I, obviously I, I missed that, missed when it was getting really exciting, but um, so Car Carl, if you just bear with me, if you could just kind of recap what you were saying. I know you, you're not too happy with the 10% for the full year. Just elaborate what you were saying. Okay, what, what I'm just throwing out for discussion, and I, and I, I, I don't know um, even if I fully agree with it, but as a, as a discussion scenario, we could be, put, be completely open with our customers in terms of where we are and, and the unknowns and what the you know what this could end up being if Lemonster holds us to, holds our feet to the fire, then we'd be looking at this much of a cost and this much of an issue. I suggest that we because we don't know those things, uh, why would we why would we put any rate increase in if we don't if we don't know these things? Why not just defer till November? And we and in November we we know and you know perhaps we even talk you know talk to the town of how how can we how could we most graciously do that how can we get a budget in place that gets us through to november fully expecting that when we get to november and we know these we're going to have some rate increases coming but by then we could also have an, a nice plan of rate increases over time and and show how we catch up and show how much retained earnings we'll use in the meantime and 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 get Put it all on the table for the people and say, "Look, we don't we don't like it either, but this is, uh, you know this is what we've been able to do. We, we got the mayor to do this for us, so we don't. It's not quite as bad as we thought, or we couldn't. Um, so we'd be in much better position in November. This is for sure going to be a November town meeting, and um, I I with all these uncertainties, I don't know why we're even putting a ten percent rate increase in um, on these people that are um, you know having a pretty tough time right now. So you rather have no increase." Um, right now, knowing that, um, you know, we could end up having a huge rate increase. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with telling them we're going to do a 10% right now, and um, we know that this could go up. I don't have a problem having it two steps. Either way, I think either way, the, the customer is going to be informed that there's a rate increase coming and it's going to be pretty good size. Uh, yeah, and I, I again, I, I don't, will, if, you, if, you, if you delay the rate increase and say, for, uh, what's November? Carl, uh, Dave, you're muted. Oh, that doesn't November. work. Look, hold on, Bob had a hand up. Go ahead, Bob. Well, Oh, I just I, I just want to also point out in looking at just the logistics of the rate increase, if we if even if you vote on a 10% tonight, um, it is one where we were talking with Carl about Lemonster, we would tell our residents that it would be effective with their flows beginning 7-1, it's too late for the 4-1. So we would not even be able to bill them for an increase until their Q2 bill. So we were already down to three quarters of a year. I just want to get that out. I, As I opposed understand. to waiting till November, then we're pushed out even further. I understand that, Barb. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. So, that's the, but that's a, thank you, Barb. <laughs> that's somebody sitting back there thinking um, uh, about the rest of the picture. So what, so that's very important because what Barb just said, even if we put a rate increase in, in place, it'd have to be more than 10% to realize that $80,000 we're talking about. 
so I don't know. So you're not going to get that rate increase until until the next. You're going to miss a, a quarter of of uh, 21 anyway. So why not miss two quarters and you know not hit the people with any increase? So now you're only talking about catching up a quarter if you have to. So maybe it's not 10 in the in November. Maybe it's 15 if everything else looks rosy. Um, because there's one other there's one other element here that I think we're going to have a better idea of um, by November. We've in this budget. The other thing that bothers me in this budget are are everything we're talking about now. This 150, 180, and and quite frankly, I took a look at Fitchburg, and the I and I going to Fitchburg is another fifty thousand dollars a year. So we're talking over two hundred thousand dollars a year through our I and I, and yet we've cut. The INI budget from fifty thousand dollars to ten thousand. So even if this, even if we find out where there's a problem, we don't have anything in this budget to go to go fix it, to to, to make that two hundred thousand dollar. So we could also we'll have the report. Hopefully, it's going to point us in a direction by November. Maybe we'll see a way or see a need to to put some money for, towards INI so that this two hundred thousand can be start start getting reduced. So. My proposal, especially thanks to Barb's you know, just comment that we've lost a quarter already, is that we we don't have a rate increase. You know, we work with with, with Heather, uh, Karen, Barb to figure out what that makes our budget look like, what we're really getting approved at town meeting, how to how to how to do that so we can get through, um, let the people know where the where the issues are. There, you know, there's a Lemonster issue. There, the, we don't have anything in here. We have some uncertainty in the contract, um, so we need you know we need a, we need a scenario to get us through to November, and then in November we're going to come back to you with a, a good plan. We'll know the numbers. We'll come back to you with how we're going to how we're going to you know get off the um, you know taking money out of out of a bank account. You know how we're going to phase in rate increases so that they can do their planning. In the meantime, they don't have any increased costs. Particularly the town and the schools, because they're huge. That 10% is not in the town's budget right now. And that's not the direction they're trying to go between now and November. Mr. No. Well, my only input, I obviously put it, is first of all, as a sewer commissioner, I feel I have a responsibility that <clears throat> We know we're going to be running in the deficit. We know that, but be, but because of the circumstances, I think we've come up with a pretty good plan of 10%, which isn't going to, you know, break anybody's bank. You know, unfortunately, it's tough out there right now. I understand that, but um, I'm not saying it's going to go to a year, though. I, I you know, if if we can, if we get the number, if if we're convinced, we have the numbers, we know what's going on. We, we've got, you know, a, a couple quarters under us that we, 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 now we know our costs. We have the RFP sign. Now we can go to the town for an increase, wh whenever it be, a, a year from now, eight months from now, whenever it is that we've got the actual numbers. The last thing I want to do is go out for, let's say, a 30% increase and find out we should have only done a 20% increase. That's, that's the last thing I want to do. And that's why I like what's going on here. Um, and we, we're being responsible with retained earnings. Um, retained earnings to me is something we've, we've worked hard to put in there and it shouldn't just be, you know, just like, you know, back in the day, you know, oh, we're, we need another $300,000. Well, okay, let's just take it from returned earnings. I don't know, I, just my opinion. I, I just trying to be as fair as I can. And I think it's a fair, fair deal. I mean, does it sound much better saying, oh, we're not gonna increase? Yeah, it sounds a hell of a lot better, but in the long run, is it gonna cost them more? Maybe. Mr. Reynolds, you have the hand up? Yeah, I, I guess Mike expressed my view better than I could. So <laughs> I, I'm in total agreement with what he just said. Thank you. My, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion. And, and again, I'm not, am I right? Am I wrong? I'm a business guy. This is the perfect storm. None of this was planned. You know, Mike and I have been on this commission since October. John, you've been on since I think February. Uh, th this is all happening fast. We lose our uh, contractor. The uh, Lumminster thing is, is uh, coming due. And Kyle, I know you work with Lumminster and I know you're trying to do the best. But the bottom line is 
we represent our customers and, and we represent the enterprise front. And I'm sorry we're in this situation. And, and the last thing we do is hide anything. I think what Mike said is makes smart business sense. We're going to lose money this year. We, I think we understand that because we don't know. We still don't know. And Kyle, you can come back with 40,000 numbers. We won't know until you go through a fiscal year with everything going on. I don't even know what our deficiency rates are going to be. But if we tell the people the honest truth that, and Barbara, if you could throw up the uh, numbers that you had there, 10% increase versus a zero increase. I mean, I like the idea, Mr. Luck, that we go back in the fall. That's no one's saying you can't do that, but we have to have some sort of direction going into Thursday. So we can sit here and talk everything that you just brought up, which we, we do anyways, but I think the customers have that right on Thursday to tell them this is what's going on. I mean, it, there's a lot going on in a short period of time and everybody's worked hard to try to get this thing done. Now, we just finished an RFP that we're very proud of. Now we have to do the budget. But if you look at the bottom line on this budget, go ahead, Barb. Oh. If you can, if you can bring it down, Bob, I can't control yep. this. There's a difference between what a 10% increase would do and what a 0% increase would do. And that's not counting everything, as Mr. Luck said. So I like the idea of a 10% increase. Could you want to go more to 20%? Good. But I don't know what the numbers are. I don't trust anything that happened until we see what the numbers actually are. That's my opinion. Just the luck. I'll bring it to you, your opinion. I've, 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 I've said everything that, that I've got. I'm, I'm anxious to see the presentation and how we're going to disclose everything honestly to the people. Okay. Barbara, need your opinions. I'm, <clears throat> I'm definitely in favor of starting a rate increase. I would not want to not do anything. I think we've got justification for, for a rate increase already and, and we can couch it or not couch it, but prepare the residents that this may not be it. We're, we have, we're in a tough period and there may be more, but at least we do it in increments and we don't go um, from zero to 60. So. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead, uh, John. I think whether we do a 10% increase or we wait, either way, the users are going to hear that there's going to be an increase. And I, I would rather do the 10% now so we don't take as much from retained earnings and then down the road when we figure out you know what our real numbers are then we'll know what the actual increase needs to be so i e either way they're they're going to know there's a, a big increase coming and i would just rather start with the 10 percent now okay. so i'm looking for a motion to accept the budget of a 10 percent increase I make a motion that we accept the uh, budget with a 10% increase. Second. I'll second that. Discussion. All in favor? Mike? Aye. Carl? Nay. John? Aye. And I for myself. Okay. Ooh. Nothing else you want to show on the screen there, Bob? I don't know if I can take my, I, I like to make, take notes and to-dos and stuff, so I didn't want to, <laughs> I was just trying, I thought I was sharing the budget. <laughs> well, that, that was good. We're learning this as we go along. Right. Okay, next on the agenda is once, once, one seven oh Mass Ave. Mr. Chair, uh, just a, just the last thing on the budget, um, in terms of presentation, how, how do you envision presenting our, our difficult situation regarding the Lemonster? When we do our presentation on the other night, we're going to have a uh, statement from the beginning, and I'll bring that up. It's basically that easy. Why, do you have okay. any other ideas? No, I... We're going to tell, exactly tell them exactly what's going on. 
we don't really have a clue, do we? We don't know what Columbus is going to do or when they're going to do it. We don't know what our uh, contract RFP final thing is going to be, do you? We don't know until it goes out. Like I say, we're in the middle of a perfect storm. I, I, I think it's, it, it verges on insulting saying we don't have a clue. It says we haven't really been doing our job. Um, so I, I, I don't know if you really mean that, but I hope you don't. When I say we don't have a clue, we don't know factual stuff to, to support the data. The only thing that you guys have is what you have from when you look at the flow meetings. But you don't know if Lemus is going to say, hey, guys, let's go another year. That was our plan to talk to Lemus and see what we could do to work out some sort of an agreement. Then this hit. I mean, right now, who knows what's going to happen? We, we don't know. We, I don't have a clue. I'll tell you that right now, Carl. I don't have a clue. Well, that I, I can't speak for you, but... Oh, we have you do. Bob and I, and we've been talking to Lemister for over six months. So to say we haven't been talking to Lemister, the only person in Lemister we haven't talked to is the mayor, and that's the charter that you and, and we, we never talked to Lemister after this all happened back on March fifteenth. Have you? Have you talked to Lemister since March fifteenth? No, Lemister has already taken their position. They, they took their have position you, in have January. Have you talked to Lemister since May uh, March fifteenth? No, there was. No, was because the there was no chance from the commission to go talk to. To uh, matter of fact, I was told I was told not to talk to the limit sir by you that you didn't want them to know you were talking to the mayor. Mr. Luck, have, we don't know anything that's been happening since March fifteenth, which is the day that the quarantine started happening. So let's go that route, okay? Thank you very much. All right, Barb. One one seven zero Mass F. Yes. Um. So I did send you the, I, I recently got the documents back from council and forwarded them to you um, with, they had uh, just a couple questions they didn't, they thought were outstanding. So I want to make sure we, we understand um, what we want for the final document. He did make my, my um, small changes. He, corrected the signatures at the bottom, he replaced extension with an installation, et cetera. Um, the questions that are outstanding, um, they didn't, they, I, I'm asking, do we need to verify with Michael Ray that um, he is hoping to not have to pay the upcoming betterment fee on his Q4 payment? I thought that was a given since he came to us in February. So I'm gonna proceed with the collector's office and with doing up an abatement, the collectors have advised that I need um, to get that Q4 onward forgiven. So I just want to confirm with, with everyone that that's your understanding as well. And I can confirm with Michael Ray as well. Okay, let's go around the horn. Mike, no. Yeah, that's to my understanding, if we're accepting it, it's, it was agreed upon originally, yeah. Mr. Luck. I agree. Mr. Reynolds. I agree. And I agree myself. So, yep, it was okay. uh, done back on February 11th. Okay. Um, and then uh, council is awaiting. There was a comment that council put in on the draft document that says, you know, the reason people are in this, the sewer service area is because they can connect. We're telling them in this document that they can't. He just wants confirmation. Um, that the property is going to be left in this sewer service area, even though, you know, it cannot connect at this time. That was my understanding, but Mr. Nolte. I'm sorry, I get sidetracked here a moment. Council put in a comment on the last draft. Well, it was in the first draft also, and he left it in. And I, he's still awaiting confirmation that given what he's telling the commission, um, that we still want to leave the property in the sewer service area. Barb, could you read the, could you read the comment for the people who are maybe going to listen to this someday and for everybody's sake? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sorry, I was just pulling it up. So let me, uh, okay. It is council. <clears throat> this, these pages, page three, it is the, Third, full, first, third full paragraph. And the item number one, the property shall remain in the SSA sewer service area. 
subject to the terms and conditions herein. Um, Brian Winner's comment, I understand that the decision was, not, was made not to remove the property from the SSA, given that the purpose of the SSA is to provide eligibility and capacity for the sewer services and the purposes, purpose of this MOA is to relinquish eligibility and capacity rights. You may wish to revisit whether this makes sense and or is consistent in light of the other terms and conditions of the MOA. He also, on the next page, page four, item number five, the property, I could also share the screen, I just realized. Um, the property owner acknowledges and agrees that notwithstanding the continued inclusion of the property within the SSA. Am I the only one who can't hear Barbara? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, John. Do you want? Do you need me to share that screen again, Dave? You, you can go ahead and do it. You should be on. I, I changed okay. the settings. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Nice. Well, there done. is the first. Although my thing, my your you guys' faces are over the comment, but anyway, yeah, the comment by council is right there. John, can you hear me now? I think we lost John. Oh, okay. Hold on, maybe not, hold on. Yeah, we lost John. Yeah, he's not there, okay. Anyway, so that comment was there in the first draft and I believe I pointed it out in the first meeting and we were all, the commission was still under the understanding that we were leaving it in the sewer service area. So I'm just tasked with confirming to council that yes, we understand, but we are leaving it in the sewer service area. And I believe the point was that should Michael Ray want to connect, he would not have to go back to town meeting. If we take it out of the, the sewer service area, it would require town meeting vote to put him back in. I thought, again, my recollection of it was that uh, you're correct. It would be stay in the sewer district. That he would, if he ever wanted to connect, he'd have to work on the easement thing and go back to this commission, whoever the commission will be in the future, and let them work it out from there. But as far as we're concerned, it'll stand in the sewer district. Uh, sewer district. That was my recognition. Carl, um, it, it, it certainly, yeah. The, the, the commission voted uh, to leave it in the sewer service district, um, but the point of the lawyer is that, in the lawyer's opinion, it's inconsistent with some other requirements in the MOU, but. It, uh, he he clearly didn't uh, say you, we couldn't do it. So, yeah, Mike. No, I agree. I think it's it, this is the way that that it went down. Um, council was present. He, he didn't strongly disagree to anything, and I think he's just you know giving us all the options right now. But I think that's the way it should be. The way it it, it originally got put through. So, okay. All right. one, Barb. And the next section is on that same page four, I think. Um, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I don't. So when I flip around, can you see me with my other pages? <laughs> page four, reducing connection fee. So I'm on page four. Um, this was another thing that I said, I did not recall from the conversation, but I could have been just distracted. Um, the commission acknowledges and agrees that should the then owner of the property wish to connect in the future in accordance with any and all bylaws, rules and regs and fees of the town and or commission, which may apply, said connection fee or other applicable fee at that time shall be reduced by the amount above, but not more and that only the cost remaining for said connection after this offset shall be then due. So what they're saying is that whatever he has paid toward the betterment would be applied towards his connection fee, which I just had as an offhand note said, I don't, I didn't remember that conversation, but um, I just want to make sure you're all good with having that in there. I don't remember that conversation at all. I, I don't remember that either. Oh. It's like a it's like a different way of writing it that I just thought that whoever he stops at the betterment and if he decides to move forward in the future, he owes the rest of the betterment and whatever 
fees at that point. So right, it seems like a complicated way of putting it because the end results are the same. Well, no, I think they're saying he would not owe a connection fee. Said connection fee shall be reduced by the amount above, meaning what he has already paid toward his betterment, which does not, it doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't make but sense. But the connection fee doesn't have anything to do with the betterment. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. So no, that doesn't make, that's, not no, I don't okay. remember any of that. <laughs> All right. I will have that. I'll get that yeah. removed. I didn't think. Hold on one second, Bob. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad because I missed, I missed that exact wording and connection. Uh, and, and maybe maybe the lawyer was just uh, you know confusing connection with betterment. Um, I think it needs to be clarified. My I I do recall I think that we expected that if if this property ever connected in the future, they would have to pay off the remaining betterment. And I th I think that's what that language is intended to say. I think it is uh, it needs work because it it has nothing to do with as, as uh, somebody said. It has nothing to do with connection, so we don't want to get that confused. I think it really needs to clearly say that he'd have to pay off the remainder of the betterment before he was allowed to connect. That was my uh, and, and one payment too. It would be uh, if they yes. get the approval, they would pay it off. Yeah, I, I mean, quite frankly, I think it's a it's a good deal because, you know, if, if I had to do this from the beginning, I'd say that there should be interest too. I mean, we're you know, sewer commission. Our customers are paying interest on this loan. <laughs> And um, you know, by doing this, this they're going to get out of the interest. But but okay, um, they at least have to pay off the rest of the betterment. Yeah. Okay, I will correct that, and that was all. So everything else had been corrected. So I'll get that one sentence corrected, and then um, confirm <coughs> that the other one is fine. So that was all I had. So do we on that on that agreement? Do we need to keep talking about this? Are you going to put it on the next agenda or is it a done deal here? Okay. As long as there's questions, I bring it up. I, I, I let that, you guys be the ones making the decision. Does that answer all your questions on this? I hope so. I would believe that after this, we would be able to send it to Michael Ray. Or I think Michael Ray has to sign it and then you guys would vote to approve it. So it may be on another agenda as soon as everything gets done in that respect. As Michael Ray saw the, the form, you sent it to him, yes. right? Yeah. Has he had any comments back or? I have not heard anything. He was fine with it last meeting, okay. um, but we had, <clears throat> sorry, we advised at that, that time I still had questions with counsel. So we'll get him a corrected document. And once he's a, agreed, we'll, we'll, I'll bring it back for a vote. Okay, let's move on. And signature. Uh, let's go 20 invoices, participation in the irrigation meeting. Go ahead, Barb. Um, yes, this is my irrigation meter fee that was supposed to be on Q2, and we've had system issues. I got it, thought it was corrected. It was supposed to go on Q3, didn't happen. And we're getting too close to the end of the year for me to count on it actually happening with Q4. This is my it, many issues I have with Munis, but this is one. Um, so what I would like to propose, I will just send out do a mail merge kind of invoice um, all the participants in the irrigation meter program for that $50 fee um, for FY20 before it isn't FY20 any longer because it was supposed to be done on Q2 and it's I've been having system issues so I just needed I was going to go ahead and do it just because we we have that amount budgeted that we were going to get that revenue for FY20 um, but I wanted to ask you all if that was if that method was okay with you okay with me mike yep i'm good carl yep john fine with me as they say make it so number one mm -hmm. as they say make it so <laughs> number one i thought it was show me the money <laughs> <laughs> okay next item um, the next item is also irrigation meter uh, related changeover. We had sent out letters to the, the base, the people that are on the program, um, advising that they had to have the remote reading capability installed by July 1st, 2020. Um, I have had a call from a resident who is health compromised and wanted to know if 
if we were holding to that July 1st date, um, because she's not really comfortable with allowing anybody in her, in her house to come look at her, you know, current arrangement and figure out what she needs. So I said I would bring it up and have it put before you guys for the discussion. Yeah, before we put this out there, what do you guys think about maybe extending that to 30 days? That date? Um, I, I think, you know, given this, given the situation of what's going on and the, um, that we should postpone that due date for two to three months. Hold on one second. John? Well, I mean, given the current environment, um, I mean, postponing that a bit, <clears throat> I think go along with everything else that's happening. Mike? Yeah, I'm good with a couple of months. I mean, if you think about it, the watering season's really coming, you know, July forward once we hit the warmer weather, so. So we need a date. Someone give me a date. I mean, they have had since August. Let me just also point out um, that we don't have it budgeted for anyone to read meters going into FY21. So we've got about, I think we have about 12 meters that are now radio, but we have another 48 or so that have, will need to be read. So just FYI that, that incurs a cost. It's not part of, it'll, it would be either we'd give it to Al um, for MP or we would ask DPW or myself to go out and, read meters or possibly in these in the letter that goes out or the invoice that goes out for their $50 fee. We could also say, please call in because we've extended it. Uh, please call this number and provide your irrigation meter on such and such a date. So try that too. Well, but just so you know, it's not budgeted to have anybody read the meters anymore. Right. Barbara, the, four, the 48 that are left do you, how many of those do you anticipate changing over? I haven't heard, I mean, I've had a lot of inquiries, people asking about it. I have had three or four people say I no longer want to participate. So I, I don't know. I feel like the people that didn't want to participate may have already reacted because they didn't want to pay a fee. Um, they, and we were thinking that that fee may prompt that discussion too. So I would say a handful more. Okay, so we still need a date and I'm looking from July 1st, we wanna move that to September 1st. Anybody, Mike? Yes, I, I think <clears throat> September 1st would probably be a good date. Okay, Carl? Yeah, I I, um, I I think September first is good. I mean, you can always you can always move it again, but I think it's a good start. It gives people some time. Okay, we can always move it, Mike. Yeah, I, I guess I'm okay with it. They, you know, it, it's got to be done, but I mean, we we can't expect anybody to, you know, okay. got to respect we, how they feel. Do we need a motion for that, Barb, or just let it go September first? I would I would take a vote, please. Okay, I'm looking for a motion to move it from July 1st to September 1st. Mr. Chairman, I move that we, um, we postpone the um, due date for changeover of the meters uh, to September 1st. Okay. Second. second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Mike? Aye. Carl? Aye. John? Aye. And I for myself. Okay. All Mr. Right. Chairman, just yes, um, yes, maybe not at this point, but this now gives us a little time. But I think we should be. I think we should think about what happens if if people don't convert over. Um, and and the one the one thing that that concerns me, and Barb, maybe you've heard uh, that the schools came in and, and made a request, which we denied. Do we do we believe that they're moving forward with moving over? Who who came forward? The schools, the schools, right? They've already. They have been the ones to upgrade. They've already performed their upgrade. Super. Thank you. I guess it wasn't that tough. Thank you. That was. Thank you, Mr. That, Chair. That's shocking. 
Okay, next item. Inflow, I and I. Go ahead, Barb. Um, just that I, I just an update or a status as far as I know. The billing files, as far as I know, that they needed from this office have been posted to their drive. Um, I did do another comparison, an I and I comparison, given the last final billing or billing that was finalized. Um, I can send it all out to you. With it. So. Those are my two I and I things. I don't know, Carl, if you have any updates on the project. Um, only just in case people haven't haven't read all this, this stuff. Um, Barb, thank you very much. Did um, did get some billing files to the uh, contractor. Um, they know that this is not the final format. That it's it's likely to change when we go to Northern Data, um, but they're gonna they're gonna proceed and do. The algorithm so that we can get the 10 pump station sections um, identified. So uh, as far as I know, th they said if they didn't have everything they needed, they would get back to us and they didn't get back to us Friday, which I think they would have. So um, fingers crossed, they've got everything they need to keep proceeding without without bugging us for more information until we get the data, uh, northern data files done. What's that completion date, Carl? Do you remember? What was that completion date? Uh, well, if, if if they have everything they need, now they need to give us a schedule for remaining. They they were holding off us to give us a schedule until we gave them the information. So last week we gave them the information. So now we can push on them. Hopefully the next uh, bi-weekly report, which would be this Friday, hopefully that'll have the um, schedule to complete. I think I'm looking forward to that uh, report. Uh, any questions on that topic? Next one's up for the minutes approval. Everybody have their minutes and read them? Yes. I'm looking for approval for the minutes of 414. Uh, March 10th is the first one. The first that's one. been the one that's been tabled. Okay. Hold on one second. Sorry. Okay. Everybody have the minutes from uh, March 10th? Uh, yes, I have. Yes, I do. Okay. Any questions on those minutes? Yes. Go ahead, Carl. I'm trying to find them. Uh, one second. Um, trying to pull it up now, sorry. Um, uh, just for, in the um, first, uh, I'm sure Jane's with us here somewhere, I hope. Um, in the first paragraph, last sentence, um, where it says, Carl will do the nominations. I think this is may end up being a moot point because I'm not sure there'll be a caucus. Um, but I had, I had told John I would do his nomination. Um, I can do more if you like, but I just wanted to be the, uh, let everybody know that I wasn't planning on nominating all of, all of the, uh, the usual suspects. So just for the minutes point of view, um, uh, Carl said he would do um, John Reynolds nomination at caucus. Um, in the next paragraph, um, next to the last line, just before the motion uh, by Mike, uh, there's a sentence there, it says, um, uh, there are eight property owners that have similar situation and then it says, but do not want to connect. Um, that's not correct. It's, they are not connected. I have no idea whether they want to or not, but they, it should say um, are not connected. Where, where are you, Carl? What, what uh, are you? Okay. Um, it's, it's on page, uh, on the first page. Uh, yeah. The subject is the 1170 Mass Ave. Yeah. And the next to last uh, line, there's a phrase that says, do not want to connect. Yeah. It should say, um, are not connected. So you didn't say that that night at the meeting? No, 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 because it, it's, because it's not true. I, 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 I didn't talk to anybody. I have no idea whether they want, want to connect. All I know is that none of them are connected. I know we have Jane on the line here. Uh, can we make those changes, Barb? 
Yep, I have Carl added that within a half mile of the 1170 Mass Ave property, there are eight property owners that have a similar situation but are not connected. Is that right, Carl? Right. Um, that's it. And I, and I want to commend Jane on her uh, listing the handouts. I think she's the first one in town to actually uh, follow that open meeting law requirement. Thank you, Jane. Jane does a great job on the minutes. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion to accept the meeting with, uh, accept the minutes with the changes that Mr. Luck recommendation. I'm looking for a motion for 310. I make a motion that we accept the minutes from the 310 meeting with the uh, changes discussed. Second. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, oh, Mr. I'm sorry. All in favor, Mr. Uh, no. Aye. Mr. Luck. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. And I for myself. Got to get used to this. I hope we don't have to do this much longer, guys, by the way. All right, I'm looking for a motion to accept the minutes from 414. I have, a, I have one comment, Mr. Chair. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Luck. Um, I think it's... The second, the second page, uh, town election, uh, where it says town election, new date, 6, 2020. And then the second sentence, I think, um, says Carl has not confirmed a date to resign and will stay on until the town election. I think, I, it's subtlety, but I think I said I will stay on at least until the town election. So you want to put the word at least in there? I, that's what I said. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So w where do you want at least? It says Carl Luck was, uh, has not okay. confirmed right. it resign and stay on at least until the town election. Okay. That's it. And I, with that, I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of for 1420. I second that. Okay. Uh, discussion? That's with the changes, is that correct? Mr. Okay. Change. Okay. okay, all in favor? Mr. No. Aye. Mr. Luck. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. And an aye for myself. Okay, the next item, I want to make it clear, Bob, before we go into the um, business manager's report, and we're going to go back to the budget one more time. You're going to take that budget and sit down with Heather tomorrow, go through the budget. It, it's yours and Heather's budget. I want to make that clear. So if she has any changes that she wants to make, she, she's, she's the uh, boss in the sewer commission. So this is her opportunity to do so. Okay. okay. And if there is changes that we're not aware of, please send them out to the commission uh, without breaking the open meeting law, obviously, before Thursday. Okay. Okay, business manager report. All right. Um, well, we just got the word from the governor that the closures extend past the date of our next uh, meeting. So my question was, was our next meeting date is May 12th, um, and I was asking, will it still be remote? Yes. Um, would it still be at 4 p.m.? That's the that's the only question outstanding. You know, since we're not working, I mean, I'm sorry Brett wasn't here. Um, I mean, 4 o'clock, just because it's on a Tuesday, the town only has one Zoom uh, package. So we'll be interfering with the town selecting meeting if we go any any later. Just so four chairman? Yeah, go ahead, Carl. I, I've, I've been told, I not confirm it myself, but I've been told that town has, town has two Zoom accounts. I'm just telling you what I heard, Carl, and that was yeah, one I'm of the reasons. I'm telling you what I heard, that, that, yeah. they, that they've signed up for two. Maybe they added one recently. Well, I know that's what was our problem last meeting with the finance last Thursday, that we well, had our time yeah. with them. And, and actually, we were, that's what it. We, we were on the air last week. I don't know if you're aware of that when that happened, because we took the finance committee 630 slot or six o'clock slot, whatever it was. Uh, but anyways, I have no problem with the four o'clock meetings. 
uh, until this is over. But let's get the uh, opinions of everybody. Mike? I'm good. I'm fine. Carl? I'm just concerned if we, if we lose Brett because he's working that minute then I'm not so fine with it. Brett's comment was that he forgot. He thought it was a Thursday night meeting. And actually, I can't go his word, but he says, <laughs> I thought the meeting was Thursday night. He is in Hopkin Hopkinton. So sorry. So I don't think it's a problem with uh, Brett, but okay. I will call him and remind him next time that we have a meeting because he, he's pretty good at that. No, but so tell me, he, he or, does have one Thursday too, though. <laughs> no, I Brett, are we supposed to Thursday? No, it is just a, it is just supposedly Dave for presenting the, to the FinCom. So I did not post it. Okay. Yeah, it's not a, a real meeting, but if you guys want to join, feel free to join. You have the information. Uh, we get the invitation, invitation for that yet, yeah, Barb? Sorry? Did we get the invitation for that from the Zoom? No. So as soon as that comes out, we'll send it to the commission if you always want to join. It's, yep, I'll check the agenda, get Zoom. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Barb. Um, John, do you want to keep going if the time's okay? Yeah, the time's oh. fine. Right. Sorry, John. <laughs> okay, and it's good with Dave. So we'll stick with that'll be our next meeting, 4 p.m. on 512. Barb, um, excuse me, Barb, is it okay with you? Yes, that's that. Yes, works for me. Okay. Um, invoices. For review, I've gotten another one from um, Woodard and Curran for work through, sorry, I'm digging, I'm digging, um, work through March 27th for $4,014.80. There is still uh, 24000 remaining on the contract, so. Want to make sure it's okay with everybody? Any questions from anybody? No. Okay. okay. Good. And the Fitchburg came in for um, this is for the period end of February through the end of March for ten thousand eight hundred sixty-five. That I'm planning. What was the number, Barb? I didn't hear. Ten thousand eight hundred sixty-five. It's nice and low, but that's yeah. because we didn't have much. Precipitation going on, I think. <laughs> oh, we have an I and I problem. <laughs> Possibly. Well, it's just that. Oh, and also we've had a couple of restaurants closure, so that would have had a, an impact there too. So. Right. All right. Um, those are my two uh, first Tuesday reports have been received. I'm waiting on one, but they it's because they closed and she doesn't have access to her log, so. That's, I'm waiting on it. But everybody else has gotten me their logs. Um, and just so you know, after RFP gets published and, and our budget gets finalized, I have to wait for it, work on my billing. So, and it needs to get out um, timely this, this month or early May because um, just for revenue sake, we wanna get the revenues if they're coming um, within this fiscal year, of course. So. I'm going to start putting up that wall and say, I'm busy doing billing. Okay. You're used to it. I know. <laughs> That's Bob, all on my list. Bob, one question. Go back to your business uh, minutes at Grease Trap. Has uh, Sean Patrick's now Alfonso's done a transfer of their... I, they have not. Um, I haven't got... Um, Il Forno did, did sign up. They're all... They're, everything's good waiting, but I don't, they're not able to open, unfortunately. No, they're, they're opening it today, I think. If not, uh, if not today, tomorrow. Okay, but no, they are all set, the transfer. And they're, they're, <laughs> open, they're opening for takeout only, by the way. Uh, I know, unfortunately. Me, but they are open. Bad timing. We welcome them, but I didn't know if the paperwork was done for it. Paperwork's done. done. I don't think it was a sale. I'm not sure if it has sold, but I think the transfer of, of the restaurant has happened. Well, change of name too. So, yeah. I mean, is that the same policy that we had? Or do you change the name? They're supposed to change over to grease trap information or? Yeah, yeah. Okay, any questions so far on anything? Here's a chance to uh, talk a little bit. Anybody have any other questions or concerns? And let's start with Mike. 
When did you say our finals was opening? I thought we saw that it I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'll just give me a hard time. Yeah, no, no, the 28th. It's uh, the, I, I recommend it. Yeah, and I just want to know how we're going to be able to go out to eat and wear a mask at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm sure there's, uh, listen, we're, there's a lot of trying times going on out there, and, and I know. Uh, and I know if I seem uh, pig headed about some of these things, and, and Kyle, I apologize to you if it was getting hot heated, but we all want the same goal at the end of the day, and that is to run our sewer division like a good business. And, and that shows passion and com shows passion and compassion. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is tough out there, and I see it every day. And I'll be glad, John, when we have that drink at the bar and screw the mask. I mean, I, I can't wait for that myself. Uh, and, and it is right around the corner. And then uh, I just hope it's uh, faster than later. But we're going into, I was a little disappointed today when the mayor, governor said May, May 18th. Uh, but I knew it wasn't going to be the fourth either. And I still don't know about town caucus. And Carl, maybe you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that's been extended because that was on the 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the, um, uh, first I'd like to, to respond. I, uh, uh, if, if I said anything that was insulting or anything, I apologize. I'm, I'm pretty emotional about this. Uh, after doing this 14 years or more, uh, it's hard for me to uh, step back. Uh, I'm passionate, what can I say? Uh, I, the, the caucus is, is, as Heather said, it's going to be put up. I, I don't, I don't see though, because uh, my understanding was the date of the March 13th, um, unless the election changes, that the March 13th was the last date that that could be. So, I think it's highly likely that it's going to have to get uh, just plain canceled. I mean, here's another example, and you know, I, I talked to a lot of people. Uh, I, I've talked to FEMA. I, I work with uh, different agencies and. I don't know, a lot of people are the same thing with us. We, we don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow because the information is changing just as fast and furious. Uh, the only thing we can do is take care of one another and take care of our families and, and move on and pray for the best. And, uh, you know, I, I consider this an honor working with all you guys. It's in a tough situation. And if you look at what this commission has been through, which I will explain uh, Thursday night. I mean, we went through four people. Uh, we're all new, except for Mr. Luck, who brings the 14 years experience. But at least we're all together and we're, we're thinking the same goal. And the only thing that we want to do is make it easier for us at the end of the day, too. And when I say easier, it's something that we all understand. And there's a lot of things here at the budget. Where do we go? What's going to happen? So, Mr. Luck, when you and I were talking, there is no certainty. We know what certainty is, but it really isn't because things do change. And hopefully they're going to change for the better for all of us. And you know, I just hope God washes out on all of us at the end of the day and you know, we're doing our jobs, and like I said, I'm very proud to be working with all, each and every one of you, including Brett, who's not here today, by the way. Uh, but you have to give hats off to Barbara and, and Jack. I mean, like I say, I think we got an excellent product out there with that RFP. And that's all you guys, too. So, you know, again, my thanks to all of that for making that happen. Any other comments, public comments? Mr. Mike Meltz. Good. Mr. Luck. No, thank you. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, no, all set. And Barbara, unless, unless anyone volunteer to take inventory in my burned out cellar for the insurance company. Ooh. Do you have receipts? <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we sign off, John, that, that's the other thing. Our, our hearts go out to you. I know on top of this, not only did you lose a home, but we have the uh, virus. So you're, okay. you're dealing with a lot. And again, our prayers are with you too. So if you need anything, Okay, you got a lot of people you. here who like you and want to support you, yeah. you and your family. Okay, we're, we're adapting. But I will let you buy me a drink with the, uh, when you get the check from the insurance company. <laughs> Only if you do inventory in his basement. I'll, I'll, I'll do one in. Go, Bob. <laughs> Look, I, I actually have a lot of pictures and a lot of receipts for all the, you know, the big Good. items. But um, all the little stuff adds up pretty yeah, quick. Does. So. Sure it does. Yeah. yeah, and you want to make sure you count for every penny of it, too. Right. Where, what's your status of that house? Have they started working on it yet, or? Well, we just got a determination from the insurance company last week that it's going to be a total teardown. Oh. Yeah. So we're we're 
um, you know, we're going over their estimate to see if we agree with, I mean, yes, we agree it's a total teardown. It's about how much is allocated for every little light switch and casement and everything else. So um, as far as the actual work starting, um, not sure yet. Well, I, I know companies are still working, especially residential construction companies. My right. we, we, we have picked a company to do the work. Yeah. Um, and there's someone who, you know, um, it's, it's one stop shopping. Um, you know, we, we have a little asbestos in the furnace room, you know, they can, they're certified to take care of that. Um, the inventory, everything else. So rather than try to manage this project myself and sub it out, um, I think I found someone that's going to work out pretty well. Well, I can assure you, you have a lot of friends in town who care about you and to help you. All you gotta do is pick up the phone. And uh, okay. that's a nice feeling to have, John, that uh, people yeah. are looking out for you. And, and I know on this commission, we are too. Okay, appreciate just for, it. Just for a quick question, is your E1 still working or did that burn up? No, no, that's that's still working. Because uh, uh, the, the wiring is, is on the opposite side of the house where the fire started. So that's that's working. Um, my sump pump's working, Good. and the trailer is hooked up to my uh, panel. Uh, but that's it. So I've got a few extension cords running all over the house. Well, like I say, I had to go out to you, and again, all you gotta do is pick up the phone. Okay. So I like to entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn the uh, April twenty eighth sewer commission meeting. Okay, a second. Second. Oh, any discussion? All in favor, Mr. Nolt. Aye. Mr. Luck. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Jane, God bless you too. And again, thank you guys very much, Barb. I'll talk to you tomorrow, but good luck on wrapping that thing up. Have a good, night, Have a good night, guys. All right. Take care, all. Thank you.